today we're talking about protons, and this is certainly a topic you want to brush up on. If you are a photon in a photon clinic, you very well and more probably than not going to get asked proton questions. So you really need to brush up on how they're used and the theory. So how does mass stopping power change with energy for protons? Why is there a tail on a Bragg peak? How does a cyclotron adjust proton energy and what are its advantages? What are the advantages of a synchrotron? Describe how the beam treatment head spreads beams for protons. What is a range compensator? And how do you make a spread out Bragg peak? So first and foremost, the mass stopping power or S over rho is larger for low Z materials. So these slow protons down more than high Z materials. So that's important. High Z also scatters more. And use to, you pretty much have to use both high Z and low Z materials to control scattering, but also lower beam energy. So you really need both of them and need both. Now, why is there a tail on a Bragg peak? So because there is energy loss straggling near the end of their range, that could be a whole video in itself. And certainly I'm sure you know the basis of Bragg peak. I'm not gonna jump too deep into that, but no Bragg peak and everything about it. So how does a cyclotron adjust proton energy and what are their advantages? So it uses a energy degrader, energy degrader here, of plastic materials. Remember what we said, low Z materials, slow protons down more than high Z ones. So you're going to use a plastic material of various thickness in a wheel that alters the proton energy and range for depth. The degraders cause neutrons, they require more shielding, and have post-treatment radioactivity. So those are some of the disadvantages of them. So although they may be necessary to give you a range of energies, there are those three big disadvantages. Now, what are the advantages of a synchrotron? So one, you get a proton from a LINAC. It accelerates through the RF cavities that match the frequency of the protons. And because the magnetic field is varied, they stay in the same rotation and they can make beams of precise energy so they don't need degraders. That's really the big thing. So the fact that cyclotrons certainly can work and give you precise beams and the energies you need, they have those negative attributes I mentioned before, whereas synchrotrons don't need those degraders, so you don't have to worry about those they know there's less shielding you don't have to worry about neutrons and you don't have the post-treatment radioactivity that you do with cyclotrons so describe how this treatment beam head spreads that beam for the protons so there's two two ways here and it's very important you know both of these so first we have passive scattering that is the first method so essentially what you're going to have is a high Z foil. Now, typically this foil is made with lead because there's max scattering with, and it has very little energy loss, but that makes a Gaussian beam. And then you want to collimate that down. So this is within 5% uniformity. So pretty uniform. And the first foil is a uniform thickness, and that spreads the beam out. And then you have a second foil that has varied thickness, and that modulates the beam intensity profile. So that's passive scattering. And two, we have pencil beam scanning. And if you know much about protons, you know this is a, a big topic. People often bring these methods up. And that is why it's very important for you to know and possibly even more detailed than I'm covering here. But this gives you a jumping off point, some brief points to look into a little bit more about the physics. But the pencil beam scanning is magnetically scanning narrow beams of protons. So this has a higher sensitivity to organ movement, 
but there are no degraders. So you don't need to go in the room. You don't have the post-treatment radioactivity. You have lesser neutrons and you potentially could get away with less shielding because of it. You could synchronize the scanning with the breathing, scan faster and use tumor tracking. So it's the, the fancy way to treat now. And I think this is almost the newer technology and certainly there are advantages, but there's also higher complexity, a more QA and there's disadvantages to that as well. But those are the two ways that you can prepare a beam and spread those for proton treatments. So what is a range compensator and how do you make a spread out Bragg peak? So first of all, a range compensator is used only, remember, only with passive scattering. Now, remember, I mentioned you need to have your foils and essentially you're going to passive scatter that beam. And so it's made of lozy materials, typically plastic or wax, to compensate for surface irregularity, tissue and, and tissue inhomogeneity. So you really use this range compensator to account for that patient tissue, the inhomogeneity and surface irregularities that every patient is going to have. Now, how do we make a spread out Bragg peak? So you want to use a range of modulator, which is a wheel with different thicknesses of layers of plastic to spread out that Bragg peak. I know there are a lot of terms and that's why I really made a lot of note cards and drove this home because without working in a proton clinic, it was difficult for me really to understand range compensator and range modulator and passive scattering, pencil beam scanning, there's so many terms and protons can seem like their own world. So I very much encourage you to really study on protons, make flashcards, continually read material, read the same chapter in your book every day, if you will, because there's a very high probability you are going to get asked a proton question, whether planning, whether how it's used or the theory of it, whether you've ever seen a proton clinic or not in your life. So I hope this has helped, if nothing else, given you a good start on what to study and what to dive deep in. If you have any questions, please comment below. I'll be happy to help where I can. I will be the first to admit I am not a proton beam expert by any stretch, but I definitely will do my research and help out in any way I can. So thank you so much and best of luck studying.